If you are running any size print farm, printing your own projects or just enjoy 3D printing in any capacity, you should watch this video because this is really exciting. This is the Plate Cycler C1M mod by Cheeto Systems and it completely transforms your regular Bamboo Lab A1 Mini into an automation powerhouse and you don't need any advanced knowledge to install or operate this setup whatsoever. The whole process is extremely quick and easy and I will go over every step you need to get your mini print farm up and running. For full transparency, T2 Systems did provide me with the Plate Cycler as well as the A1 Mini for free in exchange for an honest and unbiased review. And with all that being said, let's have a closer look. You can see they're really focused on simplicity here, the box is well padded and inside you're greeted with packaging list with QR codes linking you to support and tutorials, a clean and easy to follow instruction booklet, all parts and hardware you're going to need for the setup and of course a set of 4 textured gold PEI plates. First you need to install the heatbed cable guide and twist the ring to lock it in position. Pull the bed all the way back and snap on the tail gripper. Place the four included springs into the cylindrical slots in the tray holder, place the holder for the tray on top, and screw in the included M4 hex screw until it is just slightly tight. Then the whole assembly snaps into place on the back of the printer. Now you can mount the ejector unit at the front and the lever lifter at the top of the Z-axis. If you do not use the AMS, this is also where you should move the filament connector to. Lastly, pull the bed all the way forward and snap in the push blocks, one on each side. With everything installed, you can move to the first and only calibration you'll have to do before printing. Using the M4 screw located here, adjust the height of the entire tray. Look from the side and slowly push the bed towards the back. If the tray is too high, the tail gripper won't be able to grab the plate. All you have to do is tighten the screw to lower the tray. If you go too low, the tail gripper will collide with the plates. So get it just low enough so the tail gripper can grab a plate. Test it a few times to make sure everything works smoothly. And then we can move to the next step. Head to this website. This is the only extra software you're going to need to operate the plate cycler. It is cloud-based, but there is an option to download a local exe file. Both options are identical, so just pick whatever fits your workflow better. And just below that is where you click to download the self-test 3MF file. Save it to the A1 Mini's microSD card, insert it and run it on the printer. There's no need to load any filament at this point, this simply tests whether your installation and calibrations were done correctly. It will cycle through full plate inserting and ejecting in a loop, so you can verify if there are no issues. This is also a great time to take a closer look at how the whole system actually works. After printing the plate, the bed extends forward over the ejector. The tool head then goes all the way up and to the right and pushes on the wheel connected by a cable to the ejector lever. This lifts the flap on the ejector that grabs the plate. The bed starts moving back and detaches the plate from the magnetic base completely. At the end of the travel, it also picks up a new plate from the tray. Then it removes the old plate and installs the new one in just a couple of extra moves. If everything works well here, then we are ready for the fun part. The first stage of preparing the file happens in Bamboo Studio. I'll be using this DK can holder by Ancelor, since this is a great example of one of the users for the plate cycler. In here, just follow your usual workflow, Set up your speed, infill, colors, supports, and every other setting that you would normally use to get the file sliced and sent to the printer. But instead of going for the print button, you have to go to the file, export, and export all plate sliced file. This will generate a G-code file that you can now drop into plate cycler software. And here is where you make your final automation adjustments. You can reorder the plates by simply dragging them around and adjust how many copies of each plate you want printed using this window. It goes all the way up to 99 or you can go down to zero if you want to disable the plate entirely. On the side you have a show settings toggle where you can change the generated file name and set how many loops you want the printer to perform. And again it goes all the way up to 99. On top of that there's some super helpful statistics displayed right over here and they update in real time. So the stats you see now are just for the single loop, but if I change the loop count to 2, you can see that everything updates instantly. The loop count and play count don't exactly behave the same, but I will cover that a bit later. For now, let's generate the file by clicking here and move it onto the A1's SD card. Now all you have to do is make sure the filament colors are loaded in the correct spots. And then you can select the file from the print menu on the printer itself. If you want, you can enable or disable leveling and calibrations before each file here. If you are happy with everything, just start the print. I set up my camera and let it print overnight, so what you're seeing here is the entire process sped up from start to finish.
This was just a small model, but the functionality is identical for any project. If you have a print farm and print loads of parts using the same filaments, you can easily load four spools of the same filament, set multiple loops, and check on it occasionally to add more plates. Also worth to mention, Cheeto does recommend placing the printer near the edge of your setup and using a foam line box to catch the completed plates. Increasing the loop numbers versus increasing the copy numbers on individual plates gives slightly different results. If I set the loop repeats to 2, the printer will print one yellow plate, one red, one black and one brown, and then it's going to repeat the cycle. But if I set the loop repeats to 1, and instead increase the individual plate counts, the printer will print all copies of one plate before moving to the next. This can slightly reduce your waste since there are fewer color changes. Also, 99 is the limit for both the plate and the loop counters, but nothing stops you from doing 99 loops of 99 plates. You can purchase additional plate cycler ready plates from Chitu if you want to expand the system. At the time of filming, these were the only options available for the plate cycler, but they are considering expanding, so double-sided and cold plates may be coming soon. And also, nothing stops you from pulling the handles of the included plates and swapping them onto any plate you prefer, or simply printing more handles and expanding it that way. This is a simple mechanical driven device, there isn't much that can go wrong during regular use. One issue I can see being fairly common is one or both of these magnets popping out. This one came loose on my unit after cycling just few plates. This area of the setup goes through some quick movements and stops when the plate comes off. I fixed mine with regular CA glue and haven't had any problems since. But for peace of mind, a two-part epoxy would probably be the best choice. And honestly, other than user-related errors, like forgetting to lever the tray after moving the printer, I did not encounter any other problems. Plate Cycler is a ready-to-go automation solution that doesn't require any advanced knowledge to install or use. If you know how to slice a file and turn a screw, you'll be able to use it to its full extent. The software is intuitive, not bloated with unnecessary features, and it just works. If you are running a print farm, this will definitely be a major time saver. And as we know, time is money, so your profits will also see a boost. I don't run a print farm myself, but I do print multi-part objects pretty often. So being able to send a whole file at once, let it run overnight, and come back to everything being ready for assembly in the morning is pretty great. It does add quite a bit of bulk to the printer, especially at the back where the tray is located. So keep in mind, your menu will no longer be compact. In total, it will add just under 9 inches at the back and about 2.5 inches at the front. So make sure you have enough space. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find more information and purchase your own unit. And again, if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, I would very much appreciate if you could leave a like, subscribe and maybe even drop a comment. See you on the next one. Bye.